So in my first video lecture, I was talking a little bit about what an argument is, and I was really trying to get you into this idea of thinking that an argument is simply given reasons for why you believe that something is true. Now, what I would like to do here very briefly is outline the two main principles behind developing a good argument. So let's go back to that definition. An argument is giving reasons for why you believe something is true. A good argument is one that has two key features. First of all, for an argument to be true, the reasons, the evidence for your belief must be true themselves. The statements must be true. So I gave the example. Um, Mark teaches psychology on a Friday. It is a Friday, therefore Mark will be teaching psychology. If it is true that it is a Friday, and it is true that I teach psychology on a Friday, then you can be pretty confident that my statement that therefore I'll be teaching psychology is also true. You can be pretty confident that's right based on that evidence. However, there's a really good chance that you are not watching this on a Friday. Just random chances, a one in seven chance you're not watching this on a Friday. Um, in which case, you can't draw the conclusion that I'll be teaching psychology. If it's not a Friday, you don't know whether you don't know what other days I teach psychology. Interesting enough, I also teach psychology on a Thursday. Uh, so I might be teaching psychology even when it's not a Friday. Um, secondly, I might not teach psychology at all. Uh, might not teach it on Friday. Um, so if either of those statements is false, so if it's false that it's a Friday, which is a pretty good chance, um, or if it's false that I teach psychology on a Friday, which I have to say for um, approximately 40 weeks of the year is false, there's only 12 weeks of the year where I do teach psychology on a Friday, then the conclusion that, um, that I wanted you to believe, which is that I'm teaching psychology, would be wrong. It would be incorrect to say that I'm teaching psychology if it's not a Friday and if it's one of those weeks where I don't teach psychology on a Friday. So that's the first thing. You must have true premises. That's what it's called. The statements, the evidence, and the term, formal terms are often called premises, or premise, singular, premises, plural. Um, so if, you're, if your reasons for believing it are simply wrong, um, then your argument is going to fall to bits. Um, so, for example, if you believe that... Um, women should pay higher car insurance than men because women uh, have more accidents than men um, then actually uh, you're wrong they don't in fact women are statistically safer drivers than men so if you start from a, a, an incorrect or a false premise you're going to arrive at a false conclusion but it's also possible to move beyond that to have flaws in the logic. In other words, we can say things that are simply illogical. They don't follow from the evidence. So an example for this might be that um, tall basketball players um, tend to score more baskets than small basketball players. Uh, men tend on average to be taller than women uh, therefore women cannot play basketball now actually I've started off with two things that are to the best of my knowledge true one that taller basketball players tend to score more baskets and two that men on average are taller than women but to draw the conclusion from that, that therefore women should not play basketball is rubbish it's rubbish because actually Height is not the only factor in playing basketball. There are many other elements to it. And also, I talked about averages. You get very tall women, you get very small men. Um, and also you get below average height people who are exceptionally good basketball players. Therefore, my conclusion is is flawed. Not because my, my evidence is wrong, but because the conclusion that I draw from the evidence is illogical. It doesn't meet the standards of good rigid logical thinking and that's really what we're aiming for here is people who can think about the evidence and can really say okay what does this evidence mean 
what's what's this telling me about the nature of the problem that I'm trying to solve or the question that I'm trying to answer so again let's recap on that um, a good argument is one that is based on true evidence and high quality analysis of the evidence logical conclusions drawn from good evidence makes a good argument a bad argument is one based either on incorrect or wrong or false data or and or and you can get both or basically is drawn where the the conclusion simply does not follow from the evidence um, and that's actually quite subtle and, and really what I would do is I would draw your attention to say a book like Anthony Weston's uh, uh, handbook for arguments which will go into a lot more detail with you on this it's really worth spending a bit of time getting your head around what makes a good argument so let's just recap on what we said so far an argument is simply giving reasons for why you believe something is true and a good argument is one where your conclusion is based both on um, true evidence good quality the best quality evidence you can find and the highest standards of critical and quality thinking about what that evidence means so again i hope that's been useful for you and i uh, look forward to um, seeing you again and hopefully you will also want to listen to the final video cast in this series